This video was brought to you by viewers like you, and also Patreon members, TikiTak23 and Amanita Fallouts. Uh, they pay me money to do this stuff because chemistry is expensive as a hobby. And if you want to see more future videos like this, come join the Patreon. You get exclusive um, access to videos before they're released on YouTube publicly, and um, you also get to suggest ideas and a bunch of other stuff. So, yeah. So, you saw a title today. We're going to be making, um, uh, what is it? Antima, antimony pentafluoride. So uh, we're gonna use this to make um, antimony pentafluoride in the next video, I think. And um, from that we'll make um, fluorantimonic acid, which is just reacting in hydrate HF with the um, antimony pentafluoride. So um, yeah, uh, we're gonna do this by a direct combination of elements because it's easy and well, easy relatively because um, antimony does not dissolve in hydrochloric acid very easily. So if you just chuck it in hydrochloric acid and reflux, it's not actually going to form antimony trichloride very easily. And um, you could use antimony, pen, uh, antimony oxide, but then you have to make antimony oxide. Or you could also use sulfide, but then you have to make sulfide. So I don't want to deal with any of that. I'm just going to react chlorine with it directly. So here's the setup. Well, part of it anyway. So we got 400 milliliters of hydrochloric acid in there. And we're going to add magnesium oxide to that to generate chlorine because I am out of TCCA. So um, we're going to do the old school method. Now we're going to use 36 grams of antimony, which I'm going to grind up in this poor thing, see if it survives. Um, and um, yeah, after that, uh, I grind that up, I put it in here. Flask is already preheated, and uh, we'll set the chlorine generator and start going, I guess. Let's see how well it survives. That is quite effective, I must admit. Don't breathe this, and now we just throw it into the flask. So, 36 grams of antimony, and I'm using an excess of chlorine, so about a 0.25 molar excess of chlorine. And the hydrochloric acid's gone yellow because there's iron filings on my stir bar. The poor stir bar is going to become obliterated in there. And here's the setup we have our HCl, we have the MnO2. In our funnel, we have the drying. Oh, right, I'm gonna stick a piece of paper in that thing so it doesn't get calcium chloride in there. Okay, now we got our drying tube set up. I'll just tamp it to make sure it's not packed tightly, otherwise, no gas will go through. We have our thing going into the flask, which I've heated to 300 Celsius. So uh, let's go ahead and get this started then. So let's get some MnO2 going in there. And uh, hopefully, this should bubble and make chlorine. I don't know, I've never done this reaction. I, I, I think it needs heat though, so. Okay, I got heat on full blast right now. So, um, hopefully you should see a yellow hue and then we should get chlorine. And um, it should react over here and hopefully, uh, once the liquid goes, we can start, start stirring it. But for now, we don't need the stirring. Or the magnet might be dead already. Eh, it was worth a try. Looks like I need some more stir bars. Okay, sanity check. So, that's some potassium bromide. If there's chlorine, it should turn red, which it's not. So, we're not generating chlorine still. It is now making chlorine. I don't know what it did. Maybe it reached a certain temperature threshold. I was shaking the damn thing and adding more MnO2, so. Looks like it's bubbling now, and sanity check, let's lower the sash first. Oh, there's a lot of, hmm, interesting. But sanity check here. Yeah, there's a bit of browning. I guess I made my uh, bromide solution a bit dilute. Whoopsies, oh no. Mm. Wait, I did I just, oh yeah, there's an antimony fire. There's a fire in there, and um, So much for effective chlorine generation. I mean, hey, the the, the the drying trap worked though. Nothing, nothing got in there yet. Uh, well, let's just sit that back on there and get the chlorine going again. The good news is the fume hood is working very effectively. I can't smell any chlorine. And the other good news is, 
look at that. We have liquid in there, and it's bubbling, and it's reflexing, and the chlorine is dissolving in it, and they're reacting with the antimony further. So this is going to work, hopefully. Hopefully the excess chlorine paid off, because um, otherwise, yeah. But uh, I hate this method of making chlorine. Never do it. Never going to do it again. This is trash. This is garbage. Um, I would have used bleach, but the only reason I didn't was because I was off-put by the amount of uh, volume it would use, which is almost two liters, but start to think that may have been the better choice because at least that reaction is uh, manageable and does not suddenly do this but uh yeah that, that's working quite well a few properties about this stuff you can see it's already deliquescing it's liquid the ground glass is coated and um, if I blow air over it it fumes profusely of um, antimony oxides and um, HCl. Let's add a little water to this. Interestingly though um, antimony trichloride hisses. Uh, antimony trichloride does exist in aqueous solution. You just have to have a lot of HCl in there but you can actually form uh, you can actually isolate anhydrous aluminum um, antimony trichloride by distilling a solution of it uh, with excess HCl. I think I'll set this up for distillation instead of reflux because that kind of makes a lot more sense. And um, yeah, apparently an antimony mirror form in that joint there. I don't know why. Do you see it? Uh, I, I'm not sure if I mentioned this earlier, but I swapped out the takeoff adapter for a uh, distillation adapter to serve as a takeoff adapter because I had issues with that thing clogging because of the thin tube inside. So, yeah, I kind of knew that was going to happen, but I tried it anyways. And this condenser is no longer cooled continuously. It's just hot water in there to melt the um, chloride as it uh, condenses because otherwise it would clog up the condenser. Interesting thing, antimony has bluish green smoke or whitish really. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a kind of zinc colored flame, but it's a lot more white, so it's kind of interesting. Why can't it just freaking condense? Uh, at this point, I'm at a total loss. Um, so uh, it's become all liquid. I don't I don't know why. Uh, maybe that's the tri uh, the pentachloride. Maybe that's just water. There is a chance it could just be water that got over, but I don't think that much water would condense enough to liquefy the entire thing. I don't know. I'm going to read a cell and see what happens. Okay, that's kind of weird. Turned it to an antimony mirror when I heated it. I'm trying to get the solid out. Interesting. Okay, there's actually a good chance that's the pentachloride because the pentachloride melts at 2 degrees Celsius, 3 degrees Celsius. So Now the boiling point of this is over 200 celsius and i can confirm to you it's not because the thermometer is touching the glass that's not how this works trust me i've tried it if you put a thermometer in a test tube and you boil water in it it will not read 200 celsius because just because it's touching the glass so that's 180 or so i i believe that's the right temperature i'm not sure i should google it actually but it should be around 200 if i remember correctly i don't know the exact temperature of course so yeah that is antimony uh, trichloride and pentachloride there are old chemists and bold chemists, but no old bold chemists. So uh, now I'm distilling the uh, mixed the uh, mixed chlorides under a stream of chlorine gas, and um, this should yield us pure pentachloride, which then we can fluorinate or rather exchange with um, hydrogen fluoride and hydrous to yield us um, uh, antimony pentafluoride in situ, which using excess HF will yield us fluorine and tomotic acid directly. So uh, that will be shown in the next video after I isolate this pentachloride here. So there's our final um, the antimony pentachloride. Not a lot, but it's like it's, it's a decent amount. It's nearly 30, you know, 20 milliliters. So that'd be 75% yield. I was expecting around 30 milliliters, I believe. Not bad. Okay, so here's the, the, the antimony pentachloride. You can see it's frozen in the freezer, so this is pentachloride, so that's a good sign. And uh, I don't want to open it. Nah. Back in there it goes. 